Those Damn Ross Kids is a podcast for adults, and the opinions expressed do not reflect the opinions of our employers or even ourselves. We'd like to hear from you. Give us a call at 419-528-TDRK to leave a voicemail, and we just may play it on the show. Did you know that they coated those spikes with shit? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I do, and I did know that because I'm Chris. I did, but I did know that. Okay. I don't know. I learned that on some movie. Like, I learned most things. A Hollywood education. I went to HU. Who? A school for neglected children. (laughs) Those Damn Ross Kids. A conversation between brothers. Featuring Chris and Cole Ross. Hey, Chris, who are we? We are brothers. And what are we doing right now? Podcasting. And what episode of this podcast is it? Episode number 55. Harmony and numbers, Chris. Repetition throughout the universe. Look at this chart and see how the snail shell fits the golden mean. My name is Chris. And your name is Cole. (laughs) Exactly. My name is Cole. Your name's Chris. I was testing you. You failed. (laughs) I was testing you and I failed. What a novel concept. This is a comedy show. We're here to entertain your asses. And uh, we hope you like it. I don't really care, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, hey, Chris, do you have a story for me? (laughs) Wait, why do you raise your voice for me? I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. That is weird. Because you're like a fluttering little fairy. <laughs> Chris. With Prixie dust. With pr- <laughs> Chris, an, un- an-, yeah. an unidentified <laughs> man. Yeah. An unidentified man outside of a train station in Gothenburg, Sweden, burst into flames for no apparent reason last week. The man was standing outside of a music shop when he just kind of caught fire. Said a witness. He just stood there, burning outside the shop. After a while, he started screaming. There was there, there were a few people uh, about, but they just watched him. I ran up to him, tore off my coat, and managed to put the fire out, together with another guy. Chris, the man is alive, uh, but he has sustained such profound injury that nobody has been able to ascertain his age or his identity, and he has been too burned and sedated to speak. Are they going to go again next year? Go again where? To Burning Man. <laughs> it was awesome. It was great. The... Burning Man has no name. <laughs> Burning Man is timeless. Has no age. That's right. They're just going to go out to the go out to the vast scorching deserts of Sweden. So there is no answer to this. The, the There's question no answer I'm to ask. this. He's just he's just on fire, and that's it. Just on fire. Just did he? Okay. Frame one. There's a man. Frame two, there's a man on fire. Frame three, there's a man in a hospital. That's my little comic strip that I just drew for you. Neat. No reason. No reason why. Chris, a horrible death and disfigurement. <laughs> it can just befall us for no reason at any given time. As I guess what I'm trying to say to you is cherish every moment. As if it were your last. It was the original storyboard to the Sandra Bullock vehicle while you were sleeping. (laughs) I would have gone with Man on Fire, but okay. Gotcha. (laughs) What are you going to do? I don't know. Uh, Not not a lot, I guess. But I, I I take issue with a couple of aspects of this story. First and foremost, let's deconstruct this quote. He just stood there burning outside the shop. After a while, he started screaming. How how long would you say a while is? I mean, okay. So wait, can we can we my cousin Vinny this? <laughs> Were you cooking grits? <laughs> what kind of grits? Because I know you're very particular about your grits. I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah. You tell Were me. these instant grits? <laughs> no, 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 no. Self respecting Southern, Southern man Maine would cook, would cook instant, instant grits. grits. He wouldn't. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Were you wearing your glasses? So he burned for like twenty five minutes. <laughs> Uh, 
okay, there's time dilation and effect here, right? You know, 30 seconds of a blowjob feels a lot shorter than 30 seconds of holding your hand on a on a burner on a stove, right? Yes. And feels that feels a lot shorter than 30 seconds of putting your dick onto a stove. <laughs> but Okay, so a while would qualify as like 25 seconds, okay? Before he even reacted <laughs> to the fact that he was on fire. Are we ruling out religion? If I do both at the same time, it seems like pretty normal. I just have her get a mouthful of sriracha. But... <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to squeeze this on here and it's going to get real toothy, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> we call her enamel ellie you gonna you gonna nibble when i give you the nibble <laughs> what else do i take issue with here because there's there's more there's more people just watch this happen just the, is this performance art straight is theater this, is this a, is this a buddhist protesting something is this dateline <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, it's beyond words, but it reminds me, Chris, it reminds me of a story. Here's the dollar I found. Take it back. You were supposed to help the burning dude. <laughs> Don't you dare reference what would you do? The non-Mark Summers version. <laughs> While I have a beverage in my mouth. These wild and crazy kids. God. I double dare you to do it again, but <laughs> it makes me think of a story. It was a story of honest to God, nearly spontaneous combustion. But we don't know why. What? We don't know why the dude was on fire. We don't. But, you, you know, just there, there, there are causes. Not everything is apparent. Chris, we can't see the hole all the mm -hmm. time. There are multiple angles to this. Can I tell you my personal story of a man catching on fire in front of my eyes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, at one point, I lived with a gentleman. Um, I will not name him, but uh, at the time, he engaged in the smoking of tobacco. Okay? And it was a morning. We had some friends over, and we were we were standing on the porch. What are your stories? Why do they listen? Like the reading of a Lewis and Clark like <laughs> diary. I don't know. We That's... encountered an Indian, a Native American, <laughs> a Native American, who engaged in the smoking of tobacco. He was wearing um, a pajama sweater. Like a, like a long sleeve kind of like knit shirt that he wore a lot. Okay. No okay. big deal. Mm -hmm. Standing on the front porch with the two of us and some ladies and he goes to light up and his sleeve just like a blue flame races from the wrist of his sleeve up to his shoulder. <laughs> just for like a while. No, not for like a <laughs> while. For like a minute. He was like, yeah. <laughs> And, like stamped it out. Okay, and we didn't. We didn't. Like, we didn't know why. Because I mean, yes, a shirt is flammable, and not like blue flame that like jumps up there, hmm. you know. So it must have been body oil, or it must have been lint, you know, on the on the edge of the like a you know like lint catches fire. I can only assume. Yeah. So man on fire, Chris. Good movie. A Washington D.C. man has admitted to shooting a woman in the head after she told him that she had given him the AIDS virus. The victim visited the man at his home, where they did some drinking and engaged in full-blown intercourse. <laughs> Word choice, Chris. Word choice. You're making me laugh at a tragic thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's okay. good. After they finished, the victim told the man that she had given him AIDS. The man then walked to his bedroom calmly, reached in his closet, and retrieved a 12-gauge single-shot shotgun. He fired the rifle, striking her in the head. The victim, despite her injuries, was able to call a friend who picked her up and took her to the hospital. The victim's medical records, which were presented as evidence in the case, uh, state that she does not, in fact, have AIDS. And she said she was joking when she told the man that she had infected him. Hey, hell of a goof there. One note tab. <laughs> goof. Indian giver. <laughs> <laughs> Nice goof there. Hey, 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 that's, can, a, that's a funny one. Hey, <laughs> hope you can afford the medicine. <laughs> He's got that disease where if he laughs, he dies. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. I told didn't you we? that, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you play jokes on me. <laughs> I'll blow your head off. I'm not, I am not, I am, I am, I am, I will not be party to any monkey shines, Chris. No shenanigans. There's just certain things that you hear and you know it's white people. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I mean, really, you do. The fact that he owns a rifle instead of a handgun? No. <laughs> okay. No, it's the whole scenario. <laughs> yeah. These people are clearly not dealing with poverty or, or any sort of prejudice. <laughs> they have all the time in the world to do stupid shit like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Just to, just to dream up little fanciful scenarios. Just to dream up things like... that other people are dealing with that's devastating yeah, yeah. their lives. <laughs> just testing the waters. Testing people's. You know, just like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. If you just shoot them. Just shoot him. That's just a, in the head. That's the answer. But the lady, she's got some wounds on her head, and she is deaf in one ear. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. People can survive being shot in the head. You don't have to be a congressperson. No, you don't. No, you don't have to be a congressperson. Which says, which says a lot about our current healthcare system. <laughs> And that's another reason why I know these people are white is because she can still hear. Because <laughs> she could go to the hospital. She can still hear. That's that's the other reason I know that she's white. I didn't know you were such a champion for uh, for 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 uh, uh, civil rights. I, I, not really. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that you should shoot people on balconies of hotels. Okay. Well, uh, motels. <laughs> because if you are on a balcony where you can be shot, you're in a motel. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, what about like a nice embassy suites by a by, by a by a beach in a town such as Hilton Head or uh, Cincinnati? Or, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and if, it's, it's, in a town such as Tacoma <laughs> or Butte, room five. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Butte's in a real bad way. Like, yeah. have you have you heard about? Well, I mean, aside from the fact that their town sounds like butt, no, it sounds like there's more. <laughs> like there's more. Like there's more. Like Butin. Well, I don't know, but it seems like there should be more. Oh, okay. Like it's the first syllable of a sentence. Like it's something that's else. cut short by yeah. an assassin's bullet. Yeah, they're only half as much as what they could be. <laughs> What's the other half? Wide open spaces. Oh yeah, big sky country they call it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, but Butte, Montana, it, it's resting on a plateau beneath a like a crater lake, and that crater lake is like an industrial like dumping site, and there and and the town is like slowly uh so like uh, people are leaving it because the, the the water is like filtering down into their water table, and like they're just screwed because it's just like this ticking time bomb of like mutagen sludge, teenage mutant ninja turtle super super shredder shit, you know. Just you mentioned Butte, and I read an article about it. It's sad. Hey, Chris, do you want me to play a voicemail for us? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to play a voicemail. Hey, Ross kids. Uh, this is Gary Butterfield of uh, Dead Idea of Ahala and Watch Out for Fireball's fame. I'm giving you a call because I had an idea. I wanted to have you guys see if you can settle something for me. I'm trying to decide if something is racist or not. I, uh, I had an idea for a comic. And I want you to tell me if this is racist. So, uh, typical scene, all these kind of bugs are hanging out, like a bug party or something. And there's two chiggers talking to each other in the foreground. Uh, if you don't know what a chigger is, it's a little bit like uh, the gentleman's tick. And uh, they're standing there talking, and then in the foreground, there's like a cricket. And the cricket says something like, oh, sure, they can say it, but we have to say the CH word. So you tell me, racist or not racist, is that okay? <laughs> Discuss. You know, I know uh, Chris is a little bit, or uh, Cole rather, a little bit more PC. Chris is a little bit more like a wild card, like a Texas gunman. Two six shooters, four words. And uh, with that in hand, I'd like to see what you guys think. And uh, keep up the good work. And... Good night. Good luck. Thank you so much, Gary. If you would like to posit such ridiculous scenarios to us or ask us questions, input, comment uh, on the show, you can call 419-528-TDRK. Please don't be shy. You don't have to be funny like Gary just was. You don't have to. You know, just ask us a question. Get the ball rolling. It's our job to be funny. We love it. To, we love hearing from you. Chris, is that racist? Uh, no, Gary, it is not. And let me tell you another story. <laughs> no, it's not, um, I, no, it's not racist. What are no. you, you? What are you gonna say? That, I think that it. I think that it's a good parody of real life. Yeah, you know. No, I mean, it's, what it's, are you gonna? What are you gonna do? I think it's a parody of how of how language has uh, been. You know, not, not not only made hurtful, but is uh, is you know is is made to continue to be hurtful. Words is just words, unless they're used with hate in your heart. I mean, right? I, I guess I I wouldn't say the ch word. I would say chiga. <laughs> I would watch No Country for Old Men with Anton Chigurh. I don't even know. 
<laughs> but, Who, who's that? Oh, that's my nigga Chigga. <laughs> you're just you're just trying to see if I will beep you. Who's that nigga? Because chigga? I am a bit more PC, and you, I'm talking sir, about a goddamn are, tick. Are, <laughs> which are I got a... chiggers this year. You did, and they deserve everything that they that they get. <laughs> you did. Every stereotype they is tor- justified. You know what? But they they are they are a self fulfilling prophecy. They are make they? you itch, and the only way, only way to kill them is to itch. As soon as you itch and you expose them for what they really are, <laughs> which is our sucks on the welfare state. <laughs> <laughs> These parasites, Chris. These chiggers. <laughs> You know, because as soon as you go to open enrollment, it's the chis- the chickers are going to fill the schools. <laughs> They're going to start taking my honest, God fearing ticks yeah. and bussing them over to the chigger schools. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and you know what? Soon enough, chiggers are going to be wanting to have kids with our ticks. Exactly. You know. You know, I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want a half little chigger running around. <laughs> well, he's not going to fit in. No, you know? I don't care if his dad is the star of the football team. God, biracial people are attractive, though. They are. That's amazing. Chiggers aren't, though. No, no, no. They're awful. So, what do they do? Like, they burrow under your skin. And you can't kind of, like, see them there. You can't like, see like them the, unless unless there's like an outbreak and they like come. They're, they're surface, a ghost. Right? They're a ghost. They're that, ghost. They leave they, like they trails get into you. No, they, they, they like, leave trails, little, little they red move, dots. They, they move around underneath your skin like the bugs, like the scarab bugs from the hit Brendan Fraser movie, The Mummy. Yeah. So I guess what I would say to Gary is, is that if you do anything in your comic that in any way mimics everything that I've said about sugars, <laughs> that would be racist. That would be that would be the most racist thing in the entire world. That would world. be the most racist thing yeah, that you that could do. That would be do. the definition. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, but just well, I don't. <laughs> you know, because you you don't want to do any of that. Because here's the thing: it would be racist if it was making fun of the sugars, but sugars is just being what sugars is. These sugars. <laughs> They can't help it, but it's not racist because you're making fun of the crickets. He was like all uptight about race. <laughs> so, you know, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> how do you, how do you stop five chickers from raping a white girl? <laughs> Throw them a tiny little basketball. Walk through their, <laughs> walk through the grass with two bare legs and no socks. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Don't I have egg on my face? You do. <laughs> okay. We're gonna we're gonna mosey on from that. I think you confused <laughs> reality with what we were talking about. <laughs> gonna get a mosey on. Gonna gonna let's let's replay the disclaimer from the beginning of the show here. Okay, and we're done. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chris, tell me a story. Oh, God. <laughs> we have to continue this? <laughs> a Georgetown man is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for burning his wife with a hot clothes iron. The man says he did not burn her or strike her with anything. The man does, however, admit that he did push her onto the bed after she pre- penetrated his buttocks with a plastic sex toy. One of the couple's children told a deputy at the scene that... <laughs> Daddy burned mommy with an iron and told us that if we spoke with you, he would kill us. <laughs> His plan backfired. This little girl watched, watches too much Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> oh, no. You ever notice that most of your stories revolve around violence against women? Yes. This week I did. I did <laughs> yeah. this week because I looked back at it and I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, What's this reflecting I... on me? Yeah. What is... <laughs> What is what I want to talk about say about me? <laughs> exactly, Chris. You know, because you're picking stories, that's an editorial decision. It's kind of like those words coming out your mouth. So, <laughs> I do. I have, I have a lot of, I have a lot of stuff about, about the lady friends. <laughs> hey, you know, no, hey, we, we all, we all have our crosses to bear. But that's what's it. Is your next story about a woman bearing a cross? And, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but it's just you know the I, the world says to me what it wants to say, and uh-huh. then and then I you're a uh, conduit, Chris. I you're am not making this stuff. You're just stumbling across it throughout the world. It's floating into your transom. Yes. Yeah, Chris is just a little piece of kismet. He's got to grab it and share it. My right? vagina is a thoroughfare. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, well. If it's true that she tried. And this is going to sound so bad. 
because it's in no way am I blaming the victim here. You know, it's, it's, it's awful. Nobody deserves to be burned with a hot iron unless they ask for it. Yes, she deserved to die, and I hope she burns in hell. Chris, do not quote Chappelle's show on here. We can't pull that off. That was actually a time to kill. Was it? Yes. Oh. You know the one where Bruce Willis wears that sign that says, I hate <laughs> chiggers? Oh, no. But, um, <laughs> well, I shouldn't have been running through those fields. No, but... It was Die Hard 2. Well, Three? I Maybe, guess. I don't know. I don't know. What was the one where he diffused the, the, the bomb in the toilet? All or was that Lethal Weapon? It was all of them. It was all of them. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one where he walked across all the glass? I knew that if I was about out of popcorn when he reached the toilet... Yeah? It was almost over. Yeah. The second refill. <laughs> the second refill. Because they give you just one. They, 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 they know you. They have a list. They have pictures back there. They have pictures. No, but you never try and sneak something up the butt. You ask permission before knocking on that door. I, I'm not blaming the victim here, but... Uh, she, if, can't, she can't give you the password if she's choking. <laughs> <sighs> With your hand. With You're your sick. <laughs> Stop it! You're the one who made the noise. You're the one who made the noise, Chris. You made fallacious noises. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No. Hey, Chris. Why do you say shit like that? Hey, it's Chris. Heavy man. <laughs> hey, Chris. Yeah. Do you know what's heavier? What? The train. That's gonna take us to. That beat you into submission. Hooray. Computer scientists at Dartmouth College have analyzed 468 sets of unedited and retouched images of celebrities and constructed a program that will identify how much an image in the media has been photoshopped. This is part of an initiative to bring to light the, ex the extent to which the images we see are artificial constructs, often linked to eating disorders and body issues. Chris, I say this because, A, that's amazing. You know, uh, images, like the data associated with images, it's really complex stuff. JPEGs, you know, they're, 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 they're not simple things. And they found a way to, you know, to, to, to quantify exactly how much something has been monkeyed with, right? And I have to say, I'm, I, I appreciate the cause. Because if you look up, you know, you know, sped up videos of somebody touching up an image for an ad, you know, things like that, there's miracles that can be worked there. And you realize how artificial everything in the entire world is. Everything is idealized. There's no beauty. It's just perfection. It's just this awful, horrible, plasticine, Stepford Wives kind of thing. You know what? Embrace that mole, baby. It gives you character. You know what? If you're a fat little boy, don't trim off those handles. Yeah, just, just run around, be free, be yourself, right? You know? We shouldn't have the corners rounded off in our society. There should be bunches of corners walking around, Chris, because you know what? We're not all spheres. We're our own shape. I'm an, I'm an icosahedron, Chris, a 20-sided die. Because I play Dungeons and Dragons. Respond. Yeah, my favorite part of doing this with you <laughs> is that I really only need to be present for about 33% of the show. <laughs> Are you saying that I'm being greedy with airtime? No, I get it right the first time, and you got to say a bunch of shit in order to edit it down. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to drift away and, 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 and make it happen. So I guess what I'm going to say to you along those lines is that if you're going to condone putting together a product based on whittling down the awful to what is <laughs> presentable and admirable and, uh, and coveted, okay, what's the problem with this? Oh, okay, you got me. Although, <laughs> I mean, that's you. You I, kind of chosen. You've chosen to 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 take shit and make it into Shinola <laughs> as I, a I as would, a job. <laughs> okay, agreed, but agreed. not necessarily visually. Right, right, audio. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, <laughs> but I mean, I don't think our podcast has ever given a little girl an eating eat an eating disorder. You think that you're underestimating us? <laughs> okay, I, I'm <laughs> underestimating our reach. I need to look at I the Facebook so. stats, yes. and find out. Yeah, um, but yeah, I guess you're right. I would like to go back, Mia. This is a call out to Mia. She she said that she wanted to to be funny and stuff yeah maybe you send us an email and uh and stuff you know you 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 like to write stories and things like that mm -hmm. why don't you explain to us how we've given you an eating disorder <laughs> okay please please do yeah 
and like that. and we'll read it well maybe maybe it's not so much that we want you to eat less <laughs> Maybe it's that we want you to eat like a whole couch in a year. <laughs> I don't know. It's up to you. Just over the course of a year. Yeah. Just piece by piece. Yeah. 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 Feet first. <laughs> it's harder to pass. Yeah. That way it all crosses the finish line at the same time. <laughs> I would like to go back. Should a brand new sofa. <laughs> Turns every color brown. Uh, I, I, I that, would... that changes the showcase shoot. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna give you the jet ski, but you have to have pass to, it piece you by have piece. To eat it and then your... poop it <laughs> exactly, and then reassemble it. Yeah. So it's an engineering challenge more than anything. No, I would like to go back and take a look at uh, all of the logic <laughs> files. Logic being the program I used to edit this year podcast, and uh, and see how many cuts I make on my track and how many cuts I make on your track. Just average it out, you know. See what I what I, see what I slice and dice because I think I cut you more. Well, I think you have to, <laughs> <laughs> based on the terrible things you say. I yeah. think I think because yeah. you're required by like cosmic <laughs> law to love me and care about me, <laughs> <laughs> to want to protect you. You think you're editing when you when you edit me, you put on a cape and save me. <laughs> You're using your spidey sense to realize the next criminal thing I'm going to say <laughs> yeah. and make sure that that doesn't go public. <laughs> yep. Nope. Got to save her from that. <laughs> There's no, there is no disclaimer that's going to cover what the fuck he just said. <laughs> Chris, that disclaimer could only be so long. It, it can't be more than like 10% of the show. <laughs> Stay tuned to the next episode where we will leave the disclaimer and actually get to content. <laughs> Exactly. Stay tuned for part two of our disclaimer. God. I forget who told the last story. Was that me? Oh, we're still in the science zone. Yeah, we are in the science zone, and I have a science zone story. Cool. Do it. Yeah, which I didn't change the tab. I actually left it science zone. Okay. Uh, a study out of Keele, K-E-E-L-E, England, has found that uttering expletives can help people cope with pain in the short term, but is less effective if, if a person curses often. Dr. Richard Stevens from the research team at Keele University School of Psychology said there was no recommended daily swearing allowance, <laughs> and it was unclear if certain swear words were more effective than others. The study had 71 students carry out a cold water challenge while either repeating a swear word or a non-swear word, found that swearing increased both a person's pain tolerance and heart rate. Scientists believe swearing elicits an emotional response, which, which leads to what is known as stress-induced analgesia. People who don't swear very much in daily life can keep their hand in, uh, in cold water roughly double the amount of time uh, the people who do swear regularly right, right. in daily life, but people who do swear do not get any sort of added benefit. So Ned Flanders would have survived after the, Titan the Titanic sank longer than Homer Simpson. Absolutely. Okay. I gotcha. Ned Flanders <laughs> would have found the diamond and <laughs> ding, ding, diddly dong. Darn it. We lost in this cold water. <laughs> Burr. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like this. I like studies like this. This is the first time. I, I mean, I've heard that swearing helps you cope. Who sponsored this study? I'm sorry. It was uh, the, Bra Brigham Young, Keel University School of Psychology. Okay. No, I figured it'd be Brigham Young because they're trying to keep people from saying naughty words. Um, but <laughs> I, I like these days. This is the first time I heard the angle that there's a diminishing return. That there's a that there's a limit to the number of swears you can use. You know. You know, so Sam, Sam Kinison, there was a reason he died. I, I don't know. I just think that the guy wouldn't commit, which tells me that he's like not firmly behind his research. Oh, there is no recommended daily allowance of swearing. Okay. Yeah. yeah there okay. is no, but, but just it's, it's asymptotic. There's no pyramid. Yeah. It's, it's asymptotic. It, uh, it would have four, that four fucks a day, four fucks a day. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Cocksucker is the carb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you have to do you say so you have to do the 40 40 20 split. Absolutely. You, 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 have, you, have, 40, you have to find the zone for 40 40 percent fucks 40 percent. Um, let's say shit and then 20 percent cocksucker. Yes. If you want to, you know, if you want to, you know, maintain ketosis. Right. No, absolutely. Exactly. And then there's ca catabolic swear words. 
<laughs> that make no well, like impact Kumka's or liquor. difference. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Don't. Yeah. yeah. Anything. If well, you're any, listening to this at work, with, turn it off about thirty seconds ago. Continue. Yeah. I mean, anything. Come. Come. Anything yeah, is yeah. going to be. Uh, come is the universal prefix to yeah, make anything uh, filthy. Yeah. Catabolic. Yeah. How do you spell come? How do I spell come? How do you spell come? In what context? Um, I mean, not like come over here or, you know, like you come here right now, but just kind of like the the, the, the male reproductive fluid. Uh, like, oh, like I'm coming? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's usually over before I can spell the whole word. <laughs> <laughs> You're like some kind of magician who casts spells by spelling. F-I-R-E, fire, C-O-M-E, come. Well, what I like to do is like to, I've trained myself yeah. so that like I give the first spurt. <laughs> and then if you want more you got to beg for it <laughs> spell it spell i'll save it. no i'll save it for later okay <laughs> don't worry that's remarkable self-control it is it's Even awesome studying under sting I, <laughs> bono <laughs> i confuse him too okay yeah. don't worry <laughs> yeah, yeah which which one did uh next to you i think that was phil collins oh no that was, uh, was Sting. that was but that was the police you know all i want is to be next to you yeah Gotcha. I don't know that one. What can I do? Yeah, you know, that's it's the police. It's the police. Don't worry. <laughs> Just put I don't have to, I don't have to say anything else. Put that cat Rock. down. <laughs> Roxanne. Yeah. Okay. I'll cut that out, don't worry. I won't cut it out. <laughs> Dave Coulier? <laughs> what? Dave Coulier. Oh, okay. Cut, cut it, it, it out. Yep, yeah. On that show where he <laughs> seemed to do stuff. Yeah, where where, where he where he looked where at he was an Uncle Joey, and then and then, <laughs> and then he uh, allegedly had sex with Alanis Morissette. <laughs> it's constantly wore either a blazer or a hockey sweater. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> "There's no sweater. way that anybody's going to not know I'm from Canada." <laughs> exactly. Aside from my Frenchy last name. Chris, what, what? actually, it sounds like a DQ treat, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a, a dilly bar and a coulier. <laughs> you know, you know what? I will never forgive Dairy Queen because um, it, they're blizzards. You know, they make they make the, the their their ice cream treat that has the candy mixed right in. You know, they did it before Cold Stone, right? Um, they had a Nerds Blizzard. And I ordered oh, it. Oh, that's once. horrible. That's bad. That's Nerds horrible. already destroy your teeth. Oh, my God. And you're going to add freezing cold to oh, the situation. My God. Dairy Queen, shame on you. Oh, shame on let's you. Let's have a Laffy Taffy Blizzard. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I, I was more of a fan of the, of the, of the now and laters, but okay. <laughs> is, this a, is this a Laffy Taffy Blizzard or is this a gravel blizzard? <laughs> <laughs> is there sand in this? Is, this? is this a gravel blizzard meant for birds to help aid digestion as they keep stuff in their gizzard? Oh, my God. God. Chris <laughs> used a lot of Z's there. Blizzard Gizzard? I think you used all the Z's that you have. <laughs> oh, we, we you have no more Z's. So I'll no longer be able to cope with uh, pain. Or sleep. <laughs> Chris, when I was doing <laughs> when I was doing my pre production, um I was looking on CNN.com. You know, uh, I was I was uh plumbing new wells. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Drilling. <laughs> Drilling new wells. Sounds more aggressive Plumbing and proactive. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have a problem with productivity, Chris. But um, I was looking... Speaking of which, have you seen my stapler? <laughs> just what you just... Yeah. yeah, what I just did. Yeah. Um, Chris, I was looking on CNN Health um, and... Why? <laughs> because i was i was hoping that there would be some kind of fantastic new disease or something like that that i could talk about on the show for the science zone and um what i found instead was a list of questions um, that i want to share with you okay do i have to answer them you don't have to answer them. I just, I just well, want... What would you want me to? You, I mean, okay. obviously, I don't, yeah, you, I don't you, have you to. You can't. You can't. Because I could clearly beat the living fuck out of you. <laughs> right now. <laughs> I don't have to do anything you say. What's funny is I'm bigger than you. It is you weird. you can still beat the but shit you, out of you me. But you menace. But I'm, 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 I've, I'm conditioned to None. be afraid of you. It is, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. It is funny. Okay, I'm just going to ask these questions to you. And you, and you can answer them, Okay. Yeah, if you want to. I mean, I recognize that you know your place. Yeah. Why is there blood in the corner of my eye? 
could be any, any number of reasons, <laughs> okay. actually. I mean, okay, you, you slept on that side of your head? Yeah, yeah. Blood pools? Blood pools? I don't know. Most of my blood things are like in stool. <laughs> why is why is there an eye in my stool? And they stool? revolve around the color of the blood in my stool. <laughs> why is the blood in my stool brown? Why is the blood on my stool brown? Yeah. Yeah. Will a bleach bath help a child's eczema? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. There's two things that's cured by a bleach bath. One is poison ivy and the other is eczema. Both okay. are skin diseases. Yeah. Or, or irritations. Okay. So of course, yeah. Yes. So let's 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 douse my child in this caustic chemical. Yeah. 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 This would be a good time Chris. to plug my fakemd.com <laughs> uh, website that I've actually started up. It's a new concept. Uh, I'm sure that I'll find some sort of video production company to explain to you why you need it. Uh, but <laughs> fakemd.com. Anyway, Fake go ahead. <laughs> Shut your goddamn mouth. Okay. Is it safe to use ketamine as a pain drug? Meow. <laughs> Chris. Uh, of course it is. <laughs> Will ketamine help depression? Help it along? Of course. <laughs> it, will, it will help your depression progress. You want to... You want to you, you wanna, you wanna snuggle up tight and sound? You know, s- snug and safe in that K-hole? Yeah. They don't, they don't call it a K-summit. <laughs> they call it a K-hole. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, it's pretty self-explanatory. And and fi- <laughs> and finally, Chris, should I still be grieving my horse's death? How long ago did your horse die? <laughs> Four years, probably. A good horse. A good horse is hard to find. Oh yeah, definitely. It's a yeah. bond that's yeah. formed at birth. You you broke the horse. You trained it to run. Anybody can win a game of pig, but to win horse, that's <laughs> that's skill. That's yeah, skill that's right there. Skill. You got to have game. You got to have. If I may, Chris, if I may use the parlance, you got to have ups of our time. <laughs> <laughs> Any number of rugs which do not have sentimental value to me, of course. Yeah. So that's CNN Health. <laughs> Like uh, there, there are there are too many podcasts right now that make use of the uh, the the endless well of Yahoo Answers, um, and I think we found we found a nice a nice little substitute for that. <laughs> I, guess. I guess I I don't know. I just uh, people need answers. Okay, it's, it's just like the white and black. And we come back to the the voicemail thing. There's like a difference because you would attract two different two different races, two different demographics of people. If you had a website called People Need Answers, and uh, and then if you had an answer uh, a site called People Be Knowing, <laughs> oh. I would like to know what what questions are asked on people, oh, on both. People, people Be Knowing. Are are you calling for a segregated internet between humans and sugars? No, I'm I'm saying I would be interested by that. Okay. I'm not, be, I'm, I'm not saying it should happen. I'm saying if I stumbled across I'm that. saying in my ideal world. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying in this proposal. I'm saying if I was Jim Crow. <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> that is, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm, okay. just, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. there can be, a, you know. Chris, tell me a story. Dig yourself out of this K-hole. A 54-year-old man was selling ice cream to a child in Manchester, England. Oh, no. Did you know this one? No. Uh, just, a 54-year-old man was selling ice cream to a child, and everything ended But he's, he's in an ice cream van, okay, which they yeah, have those, over there. Those, those are easy the to get. Side of the road. Those, yeah. those are easy to get. Yeah, when four teenagers approached him and demanded cash, the attackers tried to pull him out of the van, and in the struggle, he was struck by a machete in the back of the head. A police spokesperson is quoted as saying, No one, certainly not an ice cream man, should be subjected to such violence when simply trying to earn a living. One note tab, give me a bloody ice cream. <laughs> hey, hey, mate, get back here. <laughs> Let me nick your Moby. <laughs> it's funny how it makes itself. It does. It does. It makes itself. Blood, bloody ice cream. It's not hard. No, it's not hard at all. Not what hard. you do is you're, you're, you're picking the low hanging fruit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that explains why I'm full. Feed me. But <clears throat> I can't say that anymore because I have a job. But um, <laughs> a machete. Should we file this under, uh, when, when I tag this in the show notes, should I file it under Archaic Weapon Watch? Well, people are people still kill people with uh, with machetes all the time, like in the third world, right? No, but, yeah, machetes are today's 
Yeah. M- machetes are today's it weapon. You can't be anybody if you haven't butchered somebody with a machete, especially in Zimbabwe. You're going to scare me with that gun? No, no. no. No, I'm gonna terrify you with this machete. I, you know what? I, I don't take some. I don't take somebody menacing me seriously unless they're carrying a machete. I'm gonna scalp your shins with a machete. What's weird is you can just go and buy a machete. Well, oh, go- absolutely, we could. We could go buy machetes like right now. Wouldn't it be awesome if we had them? We could go to. We could go buy machetes and we could set up a camera on a tripod and we could have a machete fight. There's actually a, mach- a machete that I saw here like last week. Uh huh. That the, the front of it is a machete, like so the striking blade is a machete, and the back of it is various tools. It's like a Swiss Army machete. I saw it. There's like a bottle yeah. opener and a can opener and like a bone saw. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> And a remote, a universal remote. Is this thing named specifically in legislation? No, it's not. I mean, I just saw. I saw it. It had all kinds of stuff. What's on it, it called? I don't. I don't know. I don't remember because I didn't realize that life was going to bring us to this point. <laughs> so, I didn't think I was ever going to need to recall that Chris, information. All roads lead to the. Podcast. I know that it was twenty percent off, and it cost like seven ninety nine. Is the deal still going on? I don't know because I got some grudges. www.boxerbuxr.com. <laughs> okay, that's where I saw it. Oh, so, hey, w- wait a minute! We're not being paid by these people. Well, we could be. If we saw enough ma- <laughs> machetes, <laughs> if, we, if we saw enough multi shetties, yes, multi shetties. There yes. we go. <laughs> Got a grudge to settle? Hey, 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 look over here. Got a grudge to settle? Multi shetty. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's, that's okay, it. Let's stop. We're done. No, we're not. We're not? No. I have another OneNote tab. You do? Yeah. Okay. It's called Dope Not Shrunk. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. A drink market is a uh, hangover cure is enraging alcohol and road safety groups who fear it will encourage drunk driving. The so-called pick-me-up, security feel better, went on sale in Australia last week, and its website promising users will feel the effects within 45 minutes. The French-made drink is based on artichoke extract, and it contains an enzyme that helps break down alcohol in the liver five times faster than the body on its own. The company says that there's a possibility if you have one or two beers, it might get you below the legal limit in less than an hour. Well, if it's based on science, then what are we worried about? I don't know. Hmm. It's interesting. What's it called? It's called Dope Dot Shrunk. Dope Dot Shrunk? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? No, it's made in France. No. It's someone who's drunk saying, nope, not drunk. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't you know, know what it should it's, be it's called? called. Security feel better. Yeah, That's you, what it's you know, called. You know what it should be called? Hmm. Nah, I'm cool. Nah. <laughs> nah, 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 I'm cool. Nah, give me my keys. I knew I shouldn't have brought you, bitch. <laughs> Let me wheel over the chalkboard here to add this to the thing to the list of things that we're blasé about. This has been Those Damn Muskets. So that's it, right? We're done? That's it. We're done. That, that, that's all we have to say to these... To, to these jackals? Yeah. To these things? Yeah. Out there? Yeah. Piss dragons? Piss dragons, yeah. It's been a while. It's been about 40 episodes <laughs> since we made reference to the fact that, hey, if you're listening to this, uh, your your clan title, your tag, your gang, you're the piss dragons. See, that was that was the, the the thing is that we'll get, you know, if you if you have tuned in in the last 40 episodes, we snagged you <laughs> and you didn't know that you were going to be called a, a, a piss dragon. Yeah, we got gotcha. you. So there Trap you are. sprung, Chris. Yep. Trap sprung. Yeah. There's no, yeah. Un, there's no unspringing this trap. So, so what can the piss dragons call? Do. Don't ask me that. You, okay, you, I'll do you it. I'll do, do it. it. Okay, I, did a, I did it last okay, week. you did it last week. Okay. Uh, so what you can do, you can go to duckfeed.tv slash those damn Ross kids. That's your HQ. That's your launch pad to all the social media initiatives that we've got going. Okay? So from there, you can find our iTunes link that's listed in every episode. That's listed on the sidebar there. It's impossible to miss it. You can subscribe to us there. That helps us get up on the ratings. Uh, you can leave us a rating or a review. That is a tremendous way to help us out. Uh, the only other ways that rival that, you can join the Facebook group and contribute stories, contribute thoughts, let us know what you think. You can let your friends know. 
about us. Uh, you can uh, let us know what you would like from us for that because we're all about res- responsivity. Uh, and if you would like to be featured in an episode uh, voice wise, you can call our voicemail that is 419 528 TDRK. Hey, it's not toll free, but hey, this, this podcast is free. It's free comedy. So do that. Do that thing. But most of all, tell a friend and keep on listening because we love each and every one of you, except you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I called out, I called out Mia directly. Y- you need to do that. You need to write the stories because I think you'd be good at that. But there's two other people that I want to hear from. Mm-hmm. I want to hear from Carlo because I, I think he's a good dude. He shares your birthday. He, he, oh, that's right. He, he shares does. your birthday. He shares my birthday. I yeah. love that. So you can give us a call on the voicemail. You say, hey, don't play this. I'd like to hear what, you know, to, to yeah. know, know what your voice sounds like. And, uh, you know. Just reach out and touch just us. Want, yeah. Just tweak my nipple a little bit. What other person do you want to hear from? Um, I'd like to hear from Magnus. And Magnus. I don't. Yes. I think Magnus can rudimentarily type our language. Yeah. Uh, but he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's a, a, a national handicap. Uh, okay. You know? Okay. But you know, if you could do like a Hans and Franz kind of, you know, yeah, I don't know where you're hey, from, but I love Scandinavia. Yeah, I don't remember. It's I don't think he's country. from there. But yeah, I'd like to hear from like those people because uh, they seem to be pretty regular and uh, yeah. and, 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 and and we appreciate your yeah. devotion. Yeah, and if you say don't don't play us, if you say don't you know don't don't do that, then uh, then we won't. We will respect your wishes. Yeah. I mean, we we certainly don't respect anybody else's. <laughs> no, but no. we respect yours. But you've made it into the inner circle. Yeah. (laughs) Anything else? No, peace out, Jiggas. Good night.